Hey there! Today we're going to talk about this pen. And this pen is a Mont Blanc, and it is a vintage Mont Blanc. In fact, it is a Mont Blanc 344. Now, before I continue, I got this pre owned because it's vintage. Um, I thought you might be interested in a size comparison. So, it's of this is my fifth Mont Blanc, and of my Mont Blancs, it's closest I found to the Mont Blanc 22. So here we have the 22, here we have the new 344. Uh, it is a little smaller than a Mont Blanc 220, which I got here. And it's definitely smaller than a 146. And it is most seriously smaller than a Mont Blanc 3, uh, sorry, not 3, this is the 344, this is the 149. Okay, so just to give you a bit of an idea of the, the size. 344, that means, if I understand correctly, that it is a third tier pen, three. The first four indicates the uh, filling mechanism, which is uh, a, a piston. I guess the same as with the, the Meisterstück range, right? right? 146, 149, so uh, a, a telescoping piston, I assume. And uh, at least I know it's a piston, I'm not sure about the telescoping part. And the final four uh, means uh, that refers to the nib size. Um, and that, that actually makes sense. Um, so, I'll cover the parts of the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll do a writing sample. So first of all, we start with the cap. It doesn't have that white star, you know, that, that famous Mont Blanc white star. Um, when I checked pictures online of this pen, I couldn't find a single one that had the white star, and it, it doesn't seem to be there in relief. It has the line, I can't really show you that, but uh, there is a line, sort of an outline of the star, but it's not filled in with white stuff. It doesn't appear to be relief. And this being a third tier pen by Mont Blanc, and these were the, the cheapest pens, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they just, you know, didn't bother to, to fill it in with, with that white stuff, whatever they use. Um, so, that's that's just you wouldn't automatically identify this as a Mont Blanc, I think. Especially if you look at the clip, it looks a little bit pelican-ish. At least I thought so. Um, now I should have a good look at this. Um, I have the feeling. I'm not sure how well the camera picks it up, but this this clip ring seems to be a little bit off somehow. I wonder whether someone put a clip on here that shouldn't have been on here. Maybe I'm completely making this up. I haven't checked it. I don't really care. I'm not a, a collector who says it has to be exactly in the originals. I mean, I, I don't really care about that. I care about how the pen writes. Okay, so we go on. It has Mont Blanc here. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you can't really see the way you see maybe a little bit of sort of in relief. Um, Mont Blanc with a little mountain in there. Uh, it has one gold ring. I'm assuming this is gilded, but it, it could also just be another metal. Uh, I don't know. Um, so, as far as I understand, the Meisterstück pens have those three rings, and this one has just one. This is a 22, which seems to have two. There is unlike, I, I mean, undoubtedly some type of symbolism there, but I. Uh, um, I'm not that much of a Mont Blanc expert. So, now we have the barrel, we have the, the uh, piston turning knob. Um, on the piston turning knob, it says 3-44, um, which is something a lot of Mont Blancs have. Um, and that's pretty much it. No, no nice ring there, the gold ring, as the, the Meisterstück pens have, but of course it was a much cheaper pen. Unscrew the cap and you reveal a nicely shaped section. You see, oh, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but this is an ink window, um, which is completely clear, completely translucent. It's blue now because of the ink I, I put in there. No, it is not Bay State blue, but it is Waterman uh, Florida blue, and it's, you know, it just makes it a little bluer. Clean it out later. Uh, very nice, fine, 14 karat gold nib, uh, marked Mont Blanc. It has 
14K on it, that is 14C actually, but it is of course the same thing. It has Mont Blanc on there and it has 585 stamped on there. It is a fine nib. Um, and when I got this, I got this from a Dutch auction site. Uh, let me just take a sip there. When I saw the adver advertisement, I thought, well, this is interesting. Um, I hope this is one of those old-fashioned, highly flexible 14K Mont Blanc nibs. Well, I was right. The nib on this pen is fantastic. It's fine. It's not at all scratchy. You'll, you'll, I'll try to demonstrate that later in the writing sample. And the flex is out of this world. I was seriously surprised. Even better than I expected it. So it to be. So it's it's fantastic. Okay, the feed, very interesting feed, has some channels running there, parallel to the the nib slit. Not sure well you can see there, but believe me, they're there, and that's pretty much it. So that's the pen. Um, what do I like about it? Well, I think I paid the right price. Uh, this is about what I was willing to, to uh, spend on this. In return, I got a very nice pen. Um, seems to be in pretty good shape. Uh, there is a... Seems to be a... Yeah, I don't know, some kind of... I'm not sure why it's really brassing, but there's something going on with the clip. I'll just give it a, a careful rub with one of those jewelers cloths, see if I can make it shine a little bit more. And there seemed to be a very minor crack near the bottom end of the cap somewhere, which does not extend beyond the cab band, so that's a good thing. I'll see what I'll do with that. I'll just be a little careful with the with the cap. Um, but apart from that, the pen itself is in excellent condition. Uh, there are no major scratches, no no real dents. Um, at first, I thought there was something going on with the the piston turning knob. There seems to be a little hole in there, but there's another hole just like that on the other side. I'm not sure whether that's some type of Mont Blanc tool mark you can use to unscrew the piston or something. Whatever. The pen functions well, the nib is in excellent state, and it's fantastic. Um, in all honesty, there is nothing I do not like about this pen. It's, I think, a great size. Uh, it's it's comfortable to use, unposted. Uh, I'll be a little careful because of the cap the issue I just told you about. But when you post it, it's a fantastic size. Uh, it's, you know, it's a piston filler, so it, it holds a nice amount of ink. The piston mechanism functions smoothly. There was absolutely no problems there. So I'm very, very happy. And instead of just going on talking about this for a long time, I think the best thing I can do is just show you a writing sample, show you how awesome the Flex nib is, and um, that's all there's to it. So I hope this was useful, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with the Mont Blanc 344. Uh, we have here a fine nib. The ink is Waterman. Tiff Caf, the ink formerly known as Florida, now known as Serenité. Let's do a bit of writing. The nib is very smooth. Uh, I was surprised. Those of you who have seen some of my other videos probably know I'm not a huge fan of fine nibs. This one is not scratchy at all. If you do fast writing, See the pen performs very well. There was a bit of a skip there, but that may well have been me misaligning the nib and the paper. Um, no real dryness. It's a fairly wet pen, um, so that's I, I, you know, just the way I love it. Now, all of that is great, but where this nib, you know, what makes it really special is its flexibility. So I'll, I'll start with just drawing some lines. I'll start with no pressure, then add more pressure as we go. A 
Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? I was really surprised when I saw that, and extremely pleasantly so, I might add. Because what we have here is a flex nib. If this isn't flex, I don't know what is. This strange shape is just the feed. The feed uh, actually um, scraping across the paper, uh, giving ink. Uh, that's of course something you would like to avoid. Uh, it's my lack of penmanship that's causing that. If I have to use a steeper angle, I wouldn't get as wide a line, but I also wouldn't get the feed thing. So that's not, it's not broken, or it's, it's not that this is the, the pen's fault. It's just the way this is used. Of course, you can always just take a cloth and um, carefully clean the feed a little, dry it off a little before you write, if you really want to do extreme flex writing. But I mean, even with just, you know, normal stuff, normal flexiness, I think you already get a very nice amount of line variation, which is quite impressive. Okay, now as to wetness, I already discussed that a little bit. It's a fine nib. But even so, uh, it lays down a pretty wet line, um, as you can see there. Uh, so that's, you know, as I said, just the way I like it. I think it's a fantastic pen. I think I paid the right price, uh, which, in case you're interested, was uh, 100 euros. And then 15 for um, uh, insured shipping. Um, now, I'm sure, you know... I wouldn't be surprised if there are people who say they can get it cheaper. That's fine. I think this was a decent price considering what I got. 14k solid gold nib with a lot of flex. A pen that's in very good condition. A piston filler Mont Blanc. Sounds good to me. So, I hope this was useful. If you're looking for a pen, you know, a vintage pen, and you were considering this, get it. Uh, if it's as good as this one, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. And, um, well, that's pretty much all there's to it. So, I hope this was useful. And um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.